we are now at the Nebedes supercharger. Okay, the supercharger is over there. Lots of Teslas charging over there. But here behind me, I have the Jaguar I Pace. Oh, yes. And today, I'm going to do a range test and a capacity test. So, we are charging now to 100%. It takes forever. And now I'm going, okay, soon enough, I will drive at 90 kilometers per hour, right? 56 miles per hour. So, don't ask why I do it. The reason is that. It seems to be a good test for measuring a mix of highway and city driving, but um, yeah, so just do this one to because it's faster. So, yes, uh, it says 100%, it's been at 100% for a while, but um, we just have to wait a little bit more. I'm not sure if I'll wait forever for it because it can take like one extra hour. Just it's doing some balancing now, pushing the cells to, to 100%, you know, to the highest voltage. Uh, but there is a small problem though, which is that um, this press car I have here uh, has an issue. So um, I, I, I realized it a little bit too late that uh, there is no heater for some reason. Yeah, so no matter what I do, I tr put it to max, you know, high 28 degrees of maximum, no heater. I try preconditioning, I try to switch off the smart. Um, uh, smart uh, air, air conditioning, something you know. I try all the settings, it didn't work. So, um, I'm not sure what's up with this because uh, the previous car I borrowed when I went to Germany, that one, when they did the software update, suddenly the car was doing full blast on he full heat. This one has the like the opposite issue. Uh, but fortunately, it's nice and sunny today, so I'm trying to gather as much as much uh, heat in the car before we do the run. And then, okay, the result will be slightly lower uh, because we're not using air conditioning at all. I will switch off air conditioning. Uh, so, yeah, but it's somewhat cold today, like 15 degrees Celsius. So you can assume that, okay, this result would be equal to if I draw at 20 or 25 degrees Celsius with the air conditioning on. But let me show something with this car. So um, uh, it's uh, well, okay. I'm not sure what this color, uh, what the name of this color is, but it's uh, it's silver gray. Looks pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. But 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 look look look. Okay, let's let's go on the other side. Uh, it's better for the sun if you go on this side here. The seats. Look at the seats. Okay. Voila! <laughs> Ooh, we have the sport seats. Yes, bucket seats for the win. Uh, no adjustable headrest. You have this this handle. I never understood what what was the point of this handle. Uh, are you supposed to grab it when you enter or exit? Um, and uh, so you have more side support here, like thicker side bolsters. And I drove over here, and I I kind of like them. Yeah, uh, the only like disadvantage with the sport seat is that there is no adjustment. The standard seat has another up button here, adjustment for this cushion thing here, which is supposedly really nice for people with long legs. So I, yeah, I don't know about that because I'm a short Asian. Oh, oh I made a racial joke. Oh shit, I should apologize to all the Asians. But yeah, so look here in the back. Oh, same here. Yes, this this brown leather. <laughs> yeah, some of you guys will be like, oh, just came. <laughs> yeah, all right. But um, anyway, let's take a look at the charger. So um, if you see here, okay, there, there, kind of. I've been here 88 minutes. That's one and a half hours. Quick math. And it says 44 kilowatt hours, so it's slowly going up. But it's just like it's been it's been camping at 100 percent for the past 20 minutes now. So, like, how long should I wait? Okay, I'm going to wait a little bit more. But this is um, this is taking very long. You see, 44.1 now, and the car is obviously not consuming any energy because well, we don't have heater, and the car is off, so. There's like nothing in here that consumes energy except for I guess the battery sucking it in Yeah, but okay, let's uh, wait a little bit more and then we can leave and we can always round up the result in the end 
Okay, this is taking a little bit too long and I'm running out of patience. Yes, Tesla Bjorn ran out of patience. Uh, so yes, we have been 107 minutes. That's one hour and 37 minutes and we were already at 100% like half an hour ago. So we've been pushing like like 0.1 kilowatt hour every what well, I'm not even sure anymore if we get that energy in the battery what the heck is going on but um, this is like uh, I was about to say as slow as Tesla when it pushes to 100% uh, but I can't just sit here and wait another half an hour uh, let's wait for 44 let's wait for 45 kilowatt hours and then we leave yes Hmm, wait a minute, I feel a small draft here, well it could be the wind but I'm not sure, maybe like the, the fan is running to cool, cool down the battery or something, it could be that while you're charging it consumes a little bit of energy and that, yeah like how much energy do we get into the battery? Hmm. I'm not sure, but uh, can you tell me, Mr. Jaguar Cats? Oh, I can tell that this car is at 100%. If I let off now, we have almost no region. It's almost like the car is in neutral. <laughs> yes, that is close to 100%. Oh yes, this is mandatory. We have to weigh the car. So I'm... I'm guessing it is 2,240 kilos. Well, it says 20 there. Hmm. Maybe it's not. Uh, it's not uh, nullified, or it's not. Uh, okay. Whoa! 2,340 kilos. Oh, she. This is as heavy as a, a performance Model S. Yeah. Uh, the non-performance weigh about 2,200 something and then the, okay, wow, 2,340, all right, let's hammer it. Oh yeah, we are coasting downhill, but we have some headwind, so we're not picking up too much speed here. The cruising speed is set to 94 kilometers per hour, which is, which is uh, 90 kilometers per hour uh, GPS speed. Hmm, yes, yeah, so we have some headwind on the way north. We have been driving for about half an hour and we are down to 90%. Oh yes, we are consumed 10%. And uh, if you see the trip meter here, we have driven 43 kilometers. So now it could seem like we can drive 430 kilometers. But if you do the quick math here, it turns out that we are consumed 10 kilowatt hours already. So, uh, uh, 10 kilowatt, I mean, <laughs> if you make count these, crunch these numbers, it would seem like we have 100 kilowatt hours available, which is not correct. So that's the reason why you, you need to, oh, that's why you need to charge it to 100% or very close to 100% and then discharge it to zero because I've seen it, this in many, many cars, including Tesla and Ioniq and Kona, whatever that. Um, the, the state of charge here that is not linear, so you can't trust. You can't just measure a small run like here, this one, and then multiply by ten. You know, we have to drive it down to zero. Yes. Yeah. So we go. <laughs> Let's drive another three hours. Oh yeah. Oh, we have to turn around here, by the way. Yeah, this is the turnaround point. We have passed the uh, 75% mark now and uh, we have done uh, 102 kilometers so far. So if you do the quick math this time, we will see that um, uh, the estimation so far shows that we will get 90 kilowatt hour out of this pack. In the beginning it was 100 kilowatt hours, so it's slowly crawling to uh, the true value, which is probably between 82 and yeah, I'm guessing 81 to 82 kilowatt hours. So there is only one way to find out, which is to drive it all the way down to zero. Yeah, all right. So we are now one fourth of the way. Uh, yeah. 
we have been driving for over two hours and we are finally down to 50 percent yes halfway mark and if you see here we have done yeah 195 kilometers so uh, we will most likely not make it to 400 kilometers hmm. uh, and there's also a little dilemma here because uh, I have to run some errands. Well, it's actually, it's a nimber task. A fritter loss I have to deliver tonight. Uh, so um, it's already six. So I don't want to be too late. So we started at Nebenes, but we will end the trip back in Oslo. Yeah, so I have saved time because if I go back to Nebenes with almost zero, then I have to juice up and then I have to drive back again. So it's a waste of time. But um, there, there will be a, a slight advantage for uh, the IPs by going back to Oslo because if we look on the map here oh wow okay we don't see too much on the map there let's see let's zoom out uh, zoom out zoom out zoom out da -da 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 -da. Come on, zoom out some more yeah okay yeah uh, we have down slight downhill about I think it was about 100 meters of elevation drop 50 to 100 meters elevation drop so that's like a small advantage yeah but um, again, it's it's somewhat cold today. Now it's nine degrees Celsius. It was ten and eleven when we started. Uh, so um, you can say that okay, this will be uh, in a day when you have higher temperature, you know, something like that. And we still don't use the heater. So the heater has been off. Climate control has been off <laughs> because we don't want want it to blast cold air into the cabin. Okay, um, so now we have done 250, oh, okay, uh, <laughs> once this screen is up, the navigation screen is up, then at least I haven't found a way to get rid of it, but uh, it's time to head back now, we have 127 kilometers of, of range left on GOM, and I, I did a quick math, and it, it sounds like GOM is on par with uh, consumption, so, um, 250 kilometers done and about 110 kilometers back home so that would be 360 yeah so as usual we will head back home and do the fine tuning near my home uh, yeah because if you go too far now <laughs> uh, it might be harder to uh, to reach home or I have to stop before home and juice up and all that stuff so yeah nice sunset yeah so let's turn around here We have been on the road for uh, I don't know, three and a half hours maybe. Yeah, so we're about to hit the 300 kilometer mark here. Yeah, and uh, we have 20% state of charge left. Oh, hang on. Uh, there. So if we do uh, the calculation again, I estimate now that we have about. Oh, okay that we have about 81.5 kilowatt hour available. So you see that in the beginning it was like way off, it seems like 100 kilowatt hours, and then 90 and then 85, and now we are moving towards what seems to be 81 kilowatt hours. Uh, during my road trip uh, to Germany, I measured 80.8 kilowatt hours. So we can see now, uh, by the time we get back to Oslo, what, what value we get then. Oh, and it's getting cold inside the car so for the first two hours we had sunlight so we, we received some heat from the Sun but now the Sun has set and the temperature dropped also uh, it was 10 degrees Celsius now it's 6 but I've been keeping the seat heater active and also the steering wheel heater so this one is nice oh, heated steering wheel oh yes and also the seat heater uh, you have to push it to enable it. I mean, there. Then you can adjust different settings, and it it sounds like if you have it on three, then the fans will also blow to help ventilate. Oh, that's neat. Okay, I set it to one. Yeah, I don't want to burn my butt. So um, you also have this one here on the screen here. You can control uh, the settings. So let's say uh, you want to turn on this side here but you can also choose individually whether you want to have uh, the back the back uh, 
barbecue on or what what happened uh, what what huh what okay whatever uh, I think maybe you have to switch it on first and then you can choose individually like this so let's say you want the, the back uh, barbecue or you want to switch that one off um, but you only want the, the hammerite burner yeah we are now getting close to Oslo and we just got the battery low warning here at 10% so um, wow well, okay 9% now right uh, 9% and we are about to climb Kalihögen so normally this would be a scary uh, experience but not with a car with such a big battery like this oh, people are driving slow we have to hammer them yeah okay battery low Okay, we can get rid of that message there. Right, 342 kilometers so far. Woo! I've been driving back and forth now around Arnabru here, Karihaugen, to bring down the state of charge. So now we are down to 5%. Uh, still haven't seen any um, like, tr uh, like, turtle mode yet. So, um, hmm. I bet it, it occurs at 3%. Yeah, let's take it down to 3%, see what happens. Oh yes, living on the edge. We have 3% left. Oh, no, no. let me adjust here. Yeah, so, uh, GOM says 10 kilometers left. I think it's time to head back home. <laughs> we are now back home. So, uh, yes, I did 373 kilometers in a single charge and I had okay 2% left but the GOM says 6 kilometers so you know uh, how close should you push it right and this was uh, with air conditioning off so if you do the math here take uh, the consume energy average consumption multiply by the distance right and then you find out how much we have consumed during the 98 kilo 98% uh, we have used so that makes it uh, 81.5 kilowatt hours this time. So, okay, previous time, previous run when I did it in Denmark, I, I managed to get 80.8, uh, .8, but uh, I feel like back then I didn't wait long enough. And this time, yes, I waited very long at the fast charger. I was like, Ugh. yeah. So, um, but it seems like you you can't get 84.7 kilowatt hours which has been written somewhere i don't remember where according to the specs you know 80 84.7 is what jaguar claims is available but at least the two times i tried i was not able to pull that much it's either 80.8 or 81.5 yeah but um 370 kilometers hmm consumption you know, I want to try this with Optimus Prime, which is a, a Model X P90D. It also has the same battery size, right? 90 kilowatt hour. It's slightly bigger. Uh, now I have the Nereus winter tires on, 20 inch winter tires, studless. Maybe I should test that one also, yeah. But all right, uh, let's say, okay, uh, this is like best case almost. So you can you can expect about 350 kilometers in summer. Uh, when you do like a mix of highway and city driving yeah so I mean is it like a disaster or no I mean it's it's as it is as, as expected uh, for a f like all-wheel drive car heavy car like this um, you can't expect like Kona Nero consumption uh, and I believe that my Tesla <laughs> which is a 90 pack will also be able to do about 350 kilometers so yeah uh, of course I think the the mistake uh, Jaguar did was okay well okay the front yeah the front should have been more aerodynamic but the mistake Jaguar did was that they for some reason managed to get very low I mean very high VLTP number like uh, 400 well in the beginning it was 480 kilometers you know VLTP and they adjusted it down to 470 so many people they um, they ordered an iPace based on those numbers but like they were expecting you know <laughs> almost 500 kilometers uh, and back then I didn't 
bother. I mean, I didn't care too much about the specs or whatever. But if I saw that back then, you know, I would probably tell people that, hey, it's not. I mean, it's highly unrealistic. I mean, I don't get that consumption in my Tesla, you know. So you can't expect it to. So yeah, because now there are some discussions now on the, on the uh, IPACE group. But people like some people are even considering to to cancel the reservation because they yeah because the real world range is not that high. So. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think you you sh like don't cancel the reservation because this car is still a pretty damn good car. It rides well. It has good comfort, good seats. So just yeah, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I think that will be it. The range test. So uh, talk to you guys later.